Hi everyone, Amy here and today I'm going to give you a couple of ideas to use your background stamps with your embossing folders. So I'm going to jump right in and show you the products that I used. I have the Angled Mosaic 3D Embossing Folder, the Rose Bouquet 3D Embossing Folder. Those are both from All to New. I have a couple of 6x6 rubber background stamps. These are both from Pink Fresh Studios. And I will link the available products in the video description box below. So if you expand that area and scroll down, you'll find those details if the products are available. So I'm just figuring out which embossing folder I want to use with which background. And then I'm going to show you the other supplies. I have some card uh, card panels rather of 110 pound cardstock. That's Nina Classic Crest Solar White. And I have the Beach Retreat Mini Ink Pads from Catherine Pooler. Now here are a couple photos of the finished cards. You can see how they came together, but stick around. I'll show you how I did this um, and created these fun textured looks for these simple cards. So to start, I'm going to load up one of the backgrounds um, into my Misty. I remove the foam piece and I'm going to kind of nestle it right in the corner. This is the original size um, Misty, so it's larger than the mini size and these 6x6 fit perfectly in there. But I don't want my card panel to go nestled right up to the edge because I don't want the edge of the stamp um, where there isn't any of the design showing. So I want to center it in the 6x6 stamp and this is how I'm going to do it. Put a little piece of low tack tape and then I'm just flipping it over and then that will effectively hold my card panel in place while I stamp. So that way I can have it in the middle of the stamp and not um, off the edge of it. So here I'm softening the edges of where I lay down the ink with my little stamp chamois just so that the colors kind of blend easily together. And I take a few of the warmer colors from this Beach Retreat collection. Um, I recently got this mini collection. I collect the Catherine Pooler inks, but I only collect the mini ink pads. So when the new colors come out, um, I'm always anxiously waiting for them to come out and be released in the mini size ink pad. So I collect the minis and then I also get the re-inkers so that I can keep refilling them, but um, not have the the size commitment to, um, taking up that much real estate in my craft room with the full size ink pads. I just like the minis and I store them in the boxes that they came from and it, it works out well for me. So I work through these three colors and let them kind of blend together um, and then that creates my background. Now I didn't um, heat set it or anything. I figured the little bit of moisture left over from the stamping will kind of work in my favor in terms of letting the, the fibers of the paper really kind of bend around um, these 3D embossing folders. Now you could probably spritz the backs with back with water, but I don't find that I have much trouble even if I don't spritz it with water. So um, you just kind of use your judgment and kind of play around and see. Now sadly you can't really see the design. You can see it beautifully on the back, but I kind of set this aside and figure mm, I'm going to come up with some other way to kind of get that embossing to show on that. So it's not a total loss yet. I'm just going to set it aside and move on um, to the next one. Now, same thing here, I'm doing the same process with a little piece of mint tape just to line it up on this other background stamp, and this is a pretty floral. Um, and then I grab some of the cooler colors also from that same collection and then do the same thing, just kind of work in different areas um, and then let the colors kind of blend together. Now I'm softening the edges there, and then I have the really, really light blue. I can't remember the colors, but they're all part of the Beach Retreat collection. Um, and then come in with one of the darker colors on the bottom and then so in this in this panel the lighter color is more in the center and you'll see when I finish the card that's where I end up putting the sentiment so same thing I didn't spritz this with water but it did fine with the 110 pound cardstock it didn't crack or anything like that and I ran it through the embossing um, machine off screen now here's my idea to kind of get the floral to pop on the embossing. So this is a gilding polish. I have a handful of these um, in various different colors. I do get them from Amazon. Um, but I actually have a whole playlist on my channel of working with these gilding polishes. So um, I will link that as well in the video description box below if you want to check out other videos where I use this product. Um, it's kind of new to me. I find that it dries really, really quickly and it does not rub off at all. So it kind of has the look of um, mica if or perfect pearls, but I find like it stays on better because it doesn't, it doesn't rub off at all. Once it's dried, you can rub your fingers all over it 
um, and it doesn't wipe off. So I do have um, a designated little handful of these foams that I have for each of the handful of colors of, of the gilding polishes that I have. And they do get really hard. You could see I was kind of tapping on it. Um, they do dry out. You can wash them, but I kind of find that once I apply the wet medium to it, it works fine. And then the firmness of the pad actually kind of works in my favor. So I'm just kind of light-handed going over the top of that embossing just to kind of bring that flower design through. Now it's not perfect, um, but it did definitely bring it through a little bit more than the beginning. Now here I'm shopping my sentiment book. This is my storage solution. I have little baseball card pockets and I hold all my little sentiments in here. So just kind of going through and picking and choosing which little die cuts, which sentiments I want to use to finish the card. So typically I don't have anything in mind other than maybe a technique and then I just start playing. So I don't have necessarily a specific card in mind when I start. I just kind of wing it and have fun playing and go from there. Now that that I'm showing is my um, micro dot adhesive sheets. I recently discovered these and I've been having a blast um, not having to use liquid glue with these little fiddly dies. Um, basically it's just a bunch of little dots that it'll put on the on the back of your um, either die cuts or panels. Really you can use it for anything but it puts a ton of little mini um, adhesive dots on the back and then you don't need to use liquid glue. You kind of just push it down um, and then it becomes permanent. So I've been having an absolute blast using these micro dot sheets. They're saving me a lot of time and frustration. Um, if you do get a little bit of the dots on the front of your die cut, which can happen from time to time, I find that just using an adhesive eraser um, right on top of it will pull off any little you know extra dots that are where they aren't supposed to be but I haven't found it to be a huge issue it doesn't happen every time um, but if you do find that it happens like on you know metallic cardstock or something like that where it's really evident then just use your um, adhesive eraser and just pull that off but overall like I said it's not an issue um, for me I haven't had a problem with it and I'm really happy so far uh, with these micro dots. So here you can see I have this little adhesive eraser and then it just pulls a couple little extra dots that ended up on the white part of that die cut. So took care of it, no problem at all. And now I'm going to use the micro dots again to apply adhesive right to the back of this shadow layer um, to put adhesive all over the back. Now I burnish it with my um, bone folder but People say you don't even need to do that. It's just kind of an extra step that I like to take. But you can see all those dots on the back. Um, it's a nice uh, even coverage. Once you start to kind of work through the sheet, you'll need to move to different areas on it. And, you know, obviously, eventually you'll use up all the little dots. You need to move to a second sheet. But I have been using it like crazy, and I'm only on my second, just started my second sheet. So here you can see I just kind of applied these sentiments um, directly onto these card bases with this awesome texture and I find this is such a fun way to kind of bust out my background stamps because if I'm honest they've been neglected for a while here so I was happy to get a couple of them out and play with them and use them with some other items from my crafty stash so I hope you enjoyed this if you did please hit the thumbs up and I really appreciate you watching I'll check you next time bye